So Sindon, Hervé, Switch, Trevor Lovies have all been uh, breaking up dance floors over the last um, year or so with something which uh, sounded to me last night like a kind of turbo ghetto I like dance. turbo. Turbo is yeah. definitely uh, an apt term. Why is turbo a good term for what you do? Because it's very energetic. It's very fast-paced and... Um, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of fitting term, I think. It's very kind of hyperactive. It doesn't really sit still in one place. It's always moving about. That's how we kind of make our tracks. They don't really sort of stay still for any sort of sort of long time. We're just kind of moving on and, and you know, switching it up. And it seems to have uh, quite a kind of, it, you know, the, the term tearing up the dance floor seems quite apt. Yeah, it does, yeah. We recently pictured on a front cover of a magazine with chainsaws like tearing through some speakers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which of your tracks seem to have uh, the most chainsaw type effect at the moment? Uh, we just did this new, uh, new remix for Estelle, who's like a UK rapper. It's got a kind of, I might play it later actually. It's got kind of um, a very kind of trance bass line, which is kind of tearing, I guess. So is this something you've been playing out recently? Yeah, we just literally finished it last week. Um, we haven't. We sent it uh, off to the label to be approved. We haven't heard back yet, but um, it's doing really well in the clubs. It still goes trance. We should definitely have a listen to that we one. Should we uh -huh. should do. We should do. But before we start listening to to what you do, um, I thought it might be interesting to start by talking about how prolific you've been. You've done an awful lot of remixes over the last eighteen months, haven't you? Yeah, it's been crazy. It's just like really taken off over the last couple of years. Um, just remixing really hard, um, and it's 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 really it's a, like a really good challenge to do. Like and then various different artists have been coming as well, like indie bands, rappers, um, dancer artists, world music artists, and um, that's that's the that's the good challenge for me. Is basically reinterpreting what they do and putting our little flavour on there, and just giving it add sort of definitive signature. Because there's not a lot of people who can count kind of Pharaoh Monch uh, to my boy and God knows what else, you know, uh, I don't know, Lady Sovereign, yeah. all in their remix CV. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it's great. I mean, and now um, I want to sort of continue doing more work with bands because, uh, I mean, that's more interesting to me at the moment. Like rappers is something, I mean, I'm from a hip hop background, so... Like taking rap, rap vocals is something I'm kind of, it's like second nature, but doing something more with bands is like, is is interesting. I love all the parts that they, the, they give us, all the stems, all the drums and vocals. Um, that's cool. Did you start doing remixes because you were being asked to do them, or did you start doing remixes because you wanted to create stuff for your DJ sets? Um, a little bit of both, really. Um, obviously, you know, to get paid and to remix is, is obviously the best, but... Um, also, um, we're doing a lot of club tours as well, so we'll just like make tunes for our clubs, for us, for our DJ sets, just to kind of spice them up. And 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 a lot of them really don't get released, but that's something that kind of defines our, our DJ sets and make them a bit stand out, stand out from others. I mean, in a way, that really taps into that old thing about having to go and to see a DJ to hear a track. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's true, actually. It's um, it's something that you can't actually. Um, it's not a commodity that you can go out and buy. It's something that's kind of where you would only hear if you listened to one of my DJ sets or heard like a radio set or something like that. Um, and they obviously and there are a lot of a lot of sampling, so they might not always come out because they're a bit kind of not that we've like that's been an issue for us. We always like you know put out sampled tracks before, but. Yeah, I think that definitely it kind of um, changes the relationship between a DJ and people on the dance floor, doesn't it? If, if you know you're going to be getting something there that you can't get anywhere else, it also means that you're putting more in because you're having to make the effort to go to hear this stuff. It's like, I don't know, do you, do you find that the people that come and see you, um, mm, that's kind of a bit of a cul-de-sac question, really, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know, possibly. I mean, that's what I like to, I like to think, that I kind of offer something more than just playing my own tracks or playing kind of tracks that I'm into. Um, you know, I ho hopefully people go back and at the end of the night and go, wow, that's like, I never heard that before. That's like what you did with that tune is like really, really cool. So how, how prolific are you? How many, I mean, I don't know, in an average week, how many mixes or tracks do you do? Um, at a minute, we're doing like one or two a week. We're just putting them away, but now we need to kind of hold back on the remixes for a bit because 
just like got an album we're working on so it's about time we kind of maybe stop saturating the market a little bit and held a bit back for the album so who's the we in that in um this is uh, my production partner counter money crystal who also goes under the name of hervey um he's uh, a guy i've been working with sort of for the last year actually but a very talented producer i think one of the um, one of the things that uh, one of the trademark things about your stuff is that the kind of really distinctive use of specific noises. Yeah. What's your What's your favourite noise at the moment? Um, that's difficult. Um, I quite like this Estelle noise. Um, actually, a lot of our remixes are featuring like quite trancey sounds. It's kind of I don't know if we should be really going there with trance, but I think someone has to and kind of twist it up. We're not really afraid. Um, nothing's really sort of like a no-no like we we don't say that's that sounds out like we'll always go back and maybe take something that no one's really sort of tried for like 10 years i mean one of the things i think is interesting about what you're all doing is you're all pulling loads of stuff out from the past but the stuff that's kind of cool now is the stuff that was the most uncool first time around yeah yeah definitely yeah and that's just kind of dance music i grew up on and uh and now sort of technotronic and two unlimited and sort of euro like rave and that kind of stuff is kind of in trend at the moment. Uh, it's, it's, it's cool, actually. I can go and, and dig back through my old stuff. Mm. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> no, but it, I, mean it's, it, it's, I think it's really good because otherwise people end up just kind of um, trawling one path and it can get dry. So there's stuff in these records which have kind of been, you know, deemed untouchable for a long time that suddenly makes them sound quite fresh again. Yeah, yeah, it's true, actually. I mean... Um, is it, is music can often get stagnated and a lot of people seem to be copying certain sort of trailblazers in the scene and I think to put your own spin on it is is refreshing I think if you can come up with something fresh and bring something new to the to the scene then that's that's how it's gonna evolve well I think now we should have a listen to one of your biggest records at the minute um, can we have a bit of beeper please Technicals, technicals. Is there volume on this? A new version. Thanks. That's actually a new version with a rapper called Kid Sister, mm -hmm. um, who you may know. Um, because we uh, originally that song was um, a sample of Pharrell and Family, and we had a few kind of legal issues with it. I mean, we actually um, approached Pharrell and his lawyers to actually get it cleared, and we, we actually got it cleared, but they were going to take a whole load of our publishing. Um, so we thought we'd get Kid Sister mm -hmm. on it, and basically the only thing left of the original is just basically the beeper hook, Then she basically brought her, um, she put new lyrics on it. So it's pretty much an original record now. And we've just had a little, uh, a little exclusive on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, bass lines are important for you, but they seem to come from a slightly different place than other genres of music that are really kind of big on bass lines. It seems to me like it doesn't come so much from the kind of reggae sound system pool and more from the kind of booty bass, Miami kind of yeah. side of things. Would you say that's true? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, we're very much influenced by like Ghetto House, like from Chicago and, De um, and Detroit and um, Miami bass music, um, hip hop too. But um, it's funny, um, actually, I never really was into house music until I met Switch and people like that. And for me, it didn't really have that bass line sound. But um, as soon as I heard his productions, then I, like, I started really getting into house music. I didn't think it was like that um, before. So in that kind of area, you know, ghetto house, booty bass, who are the kind of people that really do it for you? Um, I think like the pioneers, people like, um, like DJ Funk, um, Godfather, um, Assault, people like that. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of dudes in Chicago, um, are kind of the the main people. And then there's a lot of new kids coming through as well. And and it's it's great now. Music is um, there's kids in Europe making that kind of music. There's there's kids in you know Switzerland making Baltimore club music in Australia. So it's not really. Um, 
you can't really put a location on it anymore. I mean, Chicago and, and those American cities are like the, the kind of the home of it, but... It, it's funny, isn't it? Because, you know, it was only a few years ago that, you know, trying to find a kind of, essentially a house music DJ under the age of 30 was, you know, almost impossible. And now yeah. it seems that this kind of style of music has regenerated, or has, has rejuvenated people into wanting to play, wanting to be DJs again, wanting to play, essentially, house music again. Yeah, and also and um, getting people into the studio and, and getting creative and making this kind of stuff as well, um, which, is, which is really good, good for the scene. I mean, you, talk, you talked about Detroit and some of those guys. Um, have you played in Detroit? Is your stuff played in Detroit? No, nah, I don't know, actually. A lot of, a lot of our stuff kind of crosses over. Um, uh, in, in Baltimore, like, like my friend of mine, Scotty B, is, is really... Um, embraced what we do and he he started playing like Baltimore club music and and house and stuff and now he's uh, even though he's a veteran of the scene he's really embraced what we do um, and a lot of DJs as well our stuff crosses over to a lot of a lot of different people I'm quite surprised but it, it's that's the way music's going now it's like people um, don't have really any hang-ups about playing like s different styles of music people are more open open-minded and you know just doing what they feel. So do you, do you consider that you're kind of working in a, a genreless age almost? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I, I, I don't even, uh, people have been trying to define what we do as well, like put a genre on it, but I think it's quite lazy. I don't think um, music should be kind of branded and, and you know, genreized and stuff like that. I think the spirit of, of music now is, is pretty much taking from lots of different places and kind of mixing it up. Which is which is refreshing. Because, mm. like cool. you say, things aren't really location specific anymore, are you? You know, have like you say, you have people in all different cities in the world making bile funk or making, yeah, you know, Baltimore, whatever. Yeah, and not necessarily from that place. Um, I guess that that kind of suggests some interesting interesting directions for the future. Yeah, I think the internet's really helped that as well. Um, like blog, the blog scene, and and how music is is um kind of um you know sent around the world it's 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 less about record shops now and it's more about um finding that music online and um the music now is moving so fast like kids in the other side of the world can be can be playing exactly the same music as you're playing like that week um and kind of putting their own twist on it and then making that music too and then putting it online and and uh so you have like a good community um what kind of places online were particularly important for you in terms of getting your stuff out there? I mean, apart from the sort of MySpace obviousness, were there any other kind of blogs or places which would were good for you? Um, I've actually, I don't really, I, I mean, I, I talk with people that run blogs, but it's usually they'll post up tracks of mine. Sometimes the, the etiquette is that they'll come and ask me permission, but m more often than not, the people will just kind of post those tracks on the site. And um, it's good, actually. At first, I was a bit um, negative about it, like, you know, people downloading your music. But now it's, it's really cool. I think, I think that's really helped the whole blog scene. Um, <coughs> I think it would be really good now to hear some more of your stuff. I mean, you talked about cool. Switch before, um, and you work a lot with him. Can we have a listen to a couple of things that show the kind of breadth of stuff that you do with him? Yeah. We're going to play a bit patchy. Yeah. I don't know if I have it. Oh, yeah. we've got, got to get up, maybe? Okay, I'm going to play um, something which is... Oh, yeah, because I, I told it. you I had that, didn't I? Yeah. Have you got it, <laughs> have you got it to hand, actually? It up. No, it's on my laptop downstairs. Well, if you've got... I mean, maybe whatever you've got there that would be um, nice to play. Or maybe while you're having a look, can you tell us how you met? How, how you and uh, Switch got together? Yeah, I was... Um, I was working in a full-time job, and um, what I was, was that? I was working uh, as a merchandiser for a fashion company, and um, one day a week I was um, I was doing PR for a label called Front Room for Jesse Rose, and um, Switch was um, kind of cutting his teeth at the t at the time, um, just kind of starting out, and um, he uh, produced some records for that label, and we got on really well, and he just said one day, like, come into the studio. Um, even though you don't have any studio experience, just come in and we'll like we'll jam on some tracks and you know bring some samples, bring some ideas, and we can you know knock some stuff out. 
So, so what do you think he was doing with house music that was different to other people? Um, he had he was just flouting the rules basically. He was he was doing something with house music that I'd never heard before. Um, just doing like these crazy, like eight bar, sixteen bar, like where where the track would just basically changed a direction and I'd never heard that before like music house music to me before that uh, it sounds a bit ignorant but it's it was like it was quite relentless and like didn't always have the kind of it didn't always have my interest it was quite druggy and and didn't really change a lot it was quite repetitive um which, which is now a good thing too like there's some good tracks um I'm trying to find this track well, what did you like about his music um, I just thought the way it sounds, like sonically, it was crazy. It was amazing. Like I'd never heard um, like like stuff like that before. Just the way he had his like kick drum sounding like so fat and bass, and like he had his own kind of own kind of sound. Mm -hmm. It was it was cool. I think one of the things that, that he does that probably well that you do too, all of you do, is make stuff that's quite interesting sonically but is really populist in the kind of best sense of the word would you agree yeah i think so yeah i mean i like to i like i want our stuff to cross over and not sound too kind of um i don't know we want our stuff to be accessible that's why um that's why we we we, we don't mind like just using samples and like being cheeky and and uh you know, doing stuff like that, like referencing sort of pop music and you know old old sort of dance records, like those kind of guilty pleasure records that we talked about. Um, can whilst I'm looking for this track, can I play something else? Yeah, of course. Okay, cool. So, what is it? What's coming out of the CD case? Um, should we play um, this Mark Ronson? Remix. Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. I think we're going to hear something on a different tempo now, aren't we? Yeah, this is, um, that was a remix for Mark Ronson, uh, Valerie. And this is, um, I wanted to play this because, um, it's like a different tempo, and um, it's for a British um, grime artist called Leaf Wilbizzle. Oh, shit. It's, it's definitely the meaty, beaty, big that's approach big, to sound, isn't it? That's a slice of uh, the ghetto tape that <laughs> inspired me. How does that connect with the music you grew up with? The music you grew up liking. D I mean, that's a kind of more of a recent thing. I didn't really grow up um, listening to that. Hip hop was really what I started getting into, and bands as well, mm -hmm. like indie bands um, alongside hip hop. Dance music came later, mm -hmm. but um, definitely hip hop was really the soundtrack of kind of growing up. Mm -hmm. Can we have a listen now to the? Um, you got the Baraka Sun Sistema thing nearby. Yeah, this is a remix um, myself and Count of Monte Cristo did for a band called Baraka Som Sistema from um, Lisbon. It's coming out on Modula. <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> kind of running joke. When a CD <laughs> skips, when uh, in, a sh in a shop or something, people always say, oh, so switch tune, it's in the tune. Yeah, the CD stutter, it's kind of like the new uh, breakdown, isn't it? The new sort of uh, extended breakdown. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah, I suppose like it's a technique we use quite a bit, like stuttered vocals. It's like it's a constant challenge, like trying to find a new way to like build out of a breakdown because traditionally it's been kind of like the feels that kind of get kind of quicker, but now it's like we're just trying to find different ways of of kind of making that kind of transition between the breakdown and the verse. And so, um, tell us a bit about Hervé. How did you how did you two start working together? Hervé is. Um, someone I met through Switch. Um, I met him uh, in the studio one time. Um, uh, Switch was working uh, with him on an EP for Dub Sided and um, we just got on really well. We just hit it off and like we were just cussing each other over like instant messenger just being like cheeky and like what, what kind he's of good an Essex boy as well. What kind of good cusses has Hervé got? 
he's really quick actually. He's very quick. He, I don't know. He's he he can just cut me down, cut me down to the ground. He's he's faster than me. Yeah. So you started working together. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we started working together. Uh, Beeper was the first thing we did. That was um, pretty much a year ago now. We did an EP in basically a week. Um, we both work really fast when we work together. He's he can just turn things out really really quick, and it's a very kind of um, good partnership actually. So we've got something else to listen to from you two, haven't we? Yeah, this is the Estelle mix I was talking about uh, with the kind of trancey influence. It's um, a track that Will I Am produced um, and feature it featured on. You weren't joking about the trance, were you? I'm not missing about, am I? <laughs> Do you think it's um, important as a producer to almost not care about what you're supposed to do? Because, I mean, you know, really, nothing sacred, is it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think um, it's, very, it's very easy to get caught up, I mean, in that whole kind of dance music snobbery thing. Um, I mean, with house music, it's, it's something that... Um, that's always existed actually like there's a kind of kind of deep house brigade or that kind of you know you can't do that you know you can't sample that you know that's I remember once um, Switch played an ABBA track which I gave him which was like a kind of cut up of uh, Voulez Vu and he played it um, at this party in London with all these kind of deep house kind of disco house people and they were like on the forums the next day Switch is playing ABBA you know it's shit what's he doing I was like Fuck it, it's like it's great. Well, what make what makes you say that or be like that? Why don't you care? Um, I don't know really. I just think you know, just I'm just just happy to kind of um, show my influences, and sometimes, admittedly, they are a bit kind of a bit kind of iffy. But um, I suppose that's what we pride ourselves on, really. At the end of the day, is like not really giving too like giving too much of a fuck, and basically. Um, yeah, just just doing what sounds right, really. And uh, is is kind of you know fun a big part of it? Uh, fun is definitely the biggest part of it. It's um it's, it, it should basically um invo ev evoke invoke that kind of provoke a reaction, which is like um, this is just fun music and not something in which you kind of is too serious or you have to think about a lot. It's something which basically. It's gonna move your waist, and you don't really have to use your head about it, and just kind of let go, and and that's that's what our stuff uh, sort of does. So it's a kind I of like think. you know Pied Piper rave style. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You will get on the dance floor. Exactly. You will lose your mind a bit, <laughs> and your ass will follow. Yep, that's it. That's it. I thought it'd be interesting to listen to something else that you've done with Hervé. Uh, you've got you got um, yeah. There. This actually. Um, it's funny you should say Pied Piper actually because um, we have an advert in um, in the UK for like a theme park called Alton Towers, and uh, the bass line sounds a little bit like the advert <laughs> for this theme park, and the breakdown is uh, kind of too unlimited esque. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. So what I what is it about you know too unlimited snap? early prodigy that we've forgotten was so good from your point of view? I don't know. Um, that's a very good question. I think it's just uh, maybe the sounds, the synth sounds I use and also I think it's the simplicity. I think that's what sometimes we can get too complicated. We can sort of get can sort of think about things too much and make the kind of music complicated but really it should just be about hooks and um, some of the best tracks are just really based around just simple drum beats and, and just, you know, something very subtle that kind of changes. So there's, you know, there's lots of stuff from that kind of, that part of music that you're taking, but obviously there are lots of other things too, but are you ever going to go as far as bringing back the cheesy rap? Well, <laughs> do you know what, Morris Minor and <laughs> Roland Rat? <laughs> Well, Rhythm well, is a dancer. Rhythm, oh right, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean. Like you know the cheesy rap that we used to get in the middle of those kind of rave records. Yeah, I could, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me and me and me and Hervé. I'm not sure it's entirely advisable. <laughs> I'm, I don't really want to be responsible. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's one element of that era which has been pretty thankfully consigned to yeah. history. 
yeah, hip house and stuff like that. Some of it's good actually, but some of it is a bit, um, yeah. Hip house is not so much of a problem. It's that kind of, you know. Uh, yeah, it's just dance it. music with with um, kind of rap. Here comes the cheesy rap. Here comes the cheesy yeah, rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one kind of technical question: um, How do you and your production partners get your bass sounding so big? Um, it's basically a lot of yeah production techniques and stuff like that. It's um, it's difficult really. Herve is definitely th the man with the bass lines. He's definitely more technical than myself. But um, we'll basically take it in turns to play the the melodies. But um, Herve is the he's the wizard with the in the studio. He'll get all the compression right. And so as a a DJ. How important it is, or how important is it for DJs who maybe don't have the, the, you know, the most huge studio experience to work with partners to get the kind of sounds out of their heads and into onto CD? <laughs> I think that's th I think that's advisable. You know, I st I mean, I started off as a DJ who kind of um, sort of then got into the studio and started making music, and I'm s I still think I'm learning really. I mean, I've only been doing it a couple of years and. Um, Switch was very instrumental in kind of in making, um, bringing my ideas out and making them sound good. Um, but I think now it's it's more accessible. Like music programs are cheap and and home studios um, are very inexpensive. I mean, what I work on is really very basic monitors and Logic and like a U USB keyboard and and just plugins. Really, it's it's so um, it's so so much easier now. So do you think, I mean, is it good to work with other, are collaborations important? Collabs are good. Yeah, collabs are good because you can collabs just... Collabs are good. Yeah, they are. Got a cheesy rap coming on. Collabs are good. Collabs are good. But you can, you can just bounce off each other, like, much better. And when you get stuck, like, the other person will come in and say, um, we'll just listen to it with fresh ears. Because sometimes when, you, when you're in the studio and you're just, you're just kind of, like struggling over this remix or something and you're just kind of laboring it out and sometimes you need to listen with fresh ears or you need to get like a second opinion. Her is really good at um, and switch both. I mean, we all kind of complement each other and um, and sometimes, you know, he'll play a bass line and he'll look at me and go, is that good? And I'll be like, that's the one. And it, if, if it's a little bit borderline, it's like sometimes you can just have that second opinion. And how important is going to the pub? Going to the pub is really, really important. That's where all the ideas happen, in the pub. Uh, that's where um, Switch um, probably, um, a bit patchy probably came from the pub with, uh, with Trevor Lovies on a, a drinking, uh, drinking uh, binge. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, a silly question, but it's also kind of a serious question as well because Making music isn't always about you know being in a studio, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, Definitely. and kind of you know looking into the blinking red lights. Yeah, actually, equipment. it's it's not the most inspiring place. Actually, the studio, it's um, it's often quite dark and you know, underground, uh, but all the best ideas we I think are kind of hatched, just, just through like just going out. I mean, it's not even that it's even too contrived. Like it's just. We'll just go out and we'll just have a chat, and then next minute we'll just be talking about music that's that we're into at the moment, or music that we've inspired us. And then we're like, oh yeah, yeah, we should do a track that's kind of like this, and maybe we'll bring that back. And it's just something which is more natural. I think that's mu good music with collaborations comes out of, of friendship and and just having a good connection. I think. Have you got something else you can play us to show a kind of different side of you? I can try. Okay, well, while you're looking, uh, maybe I can ask you a bit about South End, which is where you're from. Um, South End, yeah. If you if you kind of you think about where London is in the UK, and you kind of follow east through the East End, east, you end up at South End. You end up you? South End, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you follow the Thames all the way east, that's where South End is on the seafront. And it's got quite a specific culture, hasn't it? Yeah, it's it kind of like. Um, Guys that dress up in uh, Ralph Lauren shirts and um, kind of gel their hair and you know wear sort of tight, tight trousers and uh, and loafers and go out and drink lots of beer and when I think go to sticky carpet <laughs> clubs. <laughs> <laughs> sticky carpet clubs. I've never actually been to South End, but I've got quite a strong image of it in my head. And I always think about um, 
because a lot of the grime MCs from East London go on day trips, don't they, to South End? I've heard about this, yeah. Uh, so why is this that? I don't know why. It's kind of some grime day trip. They would get on a bus and just go and eat ice creams. Yeah, and have a weird day, have a weird grime day out. Buy saucy postcards. Yeah, buy saucy postcards, eat fish and chips, go to the arcades. And the other thing that I have in my mind about South End is kind of like kids sort of umbilically attached to arcades. Yeah, it's a big arcade culture. Um, we have like a one theme park, which is not not very good. But What's arcade the South End theme park called? It's called Peter Pan's Playground. Peter Pan's Playground? Yeah, if you're ever in South End, check it out. The little flume's a bit dis a bit disappointing though. What's what's the good ride? Um, the best ride um, is probably the the whip, probably. What I always I think that's good everywhere really. You yeah. can't really go wrong with that. What what happens on the whip? It's just thing where you kind of go really slow and then you kind of get to the corner and it just kind of it kind of accelerates. I think that's that, that's a good one. You kind of expect it, but I mean it's still good when you get there. Woo! Yeah. The whip. <laughs> um, <coughs> so, South End, is it the kind of place that you either need to kind of embrace and get what you get out of, f get out of from it, or is, the is it the kind of place that you need to get out of? It's probably the place you need to get out of. I mean, it's quite an unlikely location for music. Although, saying that, it's got like a really good history. And at the moment, it's a kind of a hotbed for new indie bands like The Horrors. Um, if you've heard of those guys are from South End, there's a lot of like more bands, and it's actually got good, was good in the 70s and 80s for like soul and like jazz, and jazz nights and stuff like that. Because it definitely kind of was on that cusp of the sort of suburban soul boy thing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, a lot of Londoners in the 80s would go to South End and basically um, have these big kind of like like soul weekenders. Um, so I, I guess it's got a good culture, a, a good sort of music history. Although I kind of always bemoan like its lack of like decent nights but um actually drum and bass was really big that's in south end that was that was exciting in 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 south end high street there was like three three shops all sort of specializing in in hardcore it's very big uh, hardcore was very big over the uk lately and so which which bit of hardcore? jungle um like which the old rave stuff yeah and then um i got into um like jungle and drum and bass and then was just buying records going to like underage club, underage raves and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Jungle, there was a big under 18 sort yeah, of drum yeah. and bass and jungle There's scene, always there? a fight. It's inevitable, <laughs> you know, <laughs> testosterone and... So which bit of jungle and hardcore did you like? Who, who would you always gravitate towards? I first got into um, to drum and bass through the Metalheads label, I guess, like um, Alex Reese, like Pulp Fiction was a big track. Um, that man over there, Zinc, responsible for a few quite a few <laughs> tunes um so yeah at the same time i was listening to like the whole metalheads era um i was getting into kind of the jump up stuff as well so you know we took the boy out of south end where's the south end in the music uh, don't know don't know it's somewhere somewhere in there well, Maybe i mean sometimes you know you, you're probably you, you can't necessarily think that way about your music but is there anything in there that you think sounds like where you grew up or sounds like the things you listen to or some way connects to to where you grew up? Um, wow, that's difficult. Possibly. I mean, I suppose the hip hop, the hip hop influence is always is always prominent. Um, no matter what kind of music we make, I think it always goes back to hip hop, mm. whether it's it might not be instantly um, recognizable in there, but it is in there, I think. So where's the hip hop in the music? Um, the hip hop is basically the a lot of the drums we use are kind of like hip hop based, and the lyrics like will cut up. It's, I mean, we'll make a house tune, and we we'll always put like some some hip hop in there, mm -hmm. and kind of it just it, just to get me interested in it, because I like I, what I want to do is like fuse like dance music and hip hop mm -hmm. more. I don't think that's happening enough. It didn't happen enough. I think it's happening more, but there's always. When I was growing up, kids that are into like hip hop and then kids that are into dance music and never really crossed over, and that's happening more now. Okay, so you know we've had new rave now. We need maybe neighbors like new hip house. Hip house, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> you, you know, you've described yourself as essentially a hip hop head. Uh, who was it in hip hop that really did it for you? Uh, Public Enemy. They had like the, uh, the kind of the kind of rage, and uh, it was 
the image was very but was striking and bold, like the S1Ws and, and Chuck and Flavor. They were the way they com combined together uh, was was great, and and hip hop was really exciting for me for growing up in in South End in sort of sleepy sleepy Essex, and then like uh, Public Enemy come and and kind of blow your mind. Those angry sort of kind of you know hard hard hip hop. I mean, it's it's easy to or forget or not to realise quite how alien that sounded at the time. I mean, I remember the first time I heard Public Enemy, thinking, I don't. It's not that I like it because th that's not really the feeling I'm getting from it. But I've never heard anything so alien and strong and yeah. powerful and mad in my life. You know, what is it? I, I need some of that. Yeah, it's 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 the it's the way that it's just so. It's just sonically. It's just. It's just it bombards you. It's just sounds coming out of everywhere, and it's all. It's just. Um, I, I heard that actually that they all just go into a studio and just all play different instruments and then record it and then maybe take a little bit from what they've, from what they've heard. Basement Jacks do that as well. They were telling me, they just they'll find something like interesting in in a session where they just all play instruments at once and sounds and that that will be like something that they'll just run with. So it's like a cacophony of like just crazy sonics and sounds and stuff. I mean, obviously, so Public Enemy was a kind of big hip hop influence for you, but who else? Who else is in your kind of your little box of favourite hip hop records? Um, what else? Um, I suppose like the Tribal Quest, like Dead Soul, kind of like that whole kind of Native Tongues thing. Jungle Brothers was big. Um, BDP, uh, KRS One. Um, not s wasn't so much into NWA and the West Coast stuff, but kind of got into that a bit later. It was more like the New York stuff, like um, Gangstar, uh, the Premier kind of stuff. <coughs> and then, kind of moving on from hip hop, was sort of old school garage, UK garage influential? Yeah, you? yeah, definitely. Was uh, it something you were kind of actively into, or just something that you liked? Um, something I just I just liked really. Um, I was into the kind of more sort of heavier stuff, not the kind of light, skippy vocal stuff. I was more into like the kind of baseline orientated. Mm. So less sweet like flowers, sweet like chocolate. Sweet like chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and then flowers was the other yeah. tune. <laughs> I just mashed it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so less uh, sweet family attitude and more Benny Hill? What? Sorry, more? Benny Hill? <laughs> Benny Hill. <laughs> Ill, Ill. Benny Hill. Oh, right, Horsepower Productions. Yeah, was yeah. That yeah. Wh which, wh I don't know. I thought you said Benny Hill. Benny Hill. A bit of running about <laughs> after busty ladies. Or <laughs> not? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I was into yeah, I was into like yeah, the, the early temper stuff. Um, that that whole kind of crew, the, the South London, uh, like Big Apple and um, that kind of sound. Um, uh, Bingo, um, those kind of records. Um, yeah, yeah, they were they were big. And what did you like about them? They just had like a really good swing to them. They had like energy, and they were, and they were very direct and like baseline led, and it, the tempo was w was good as well because it was. Um, I always find sometimes drum and bass quite hard to digest, and that was like a, a tempo which I can kind of move at like one sort of one thirty, kind of tempo, it was good. I mean, I guess you don't have anything there to play to kind of illustrate the kind of garage you're talking about, but if you don't, what sort of records would you suggest people go and check out? Um, mm. Good question. Um, what's, a, what's a recommended listen? I mean, it, you know, I don't, that's kind of slightly putting you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't necessarily have Wookie, to. Wookie, like Wookie, Wookie actually. Okay. I'd say like he's, he was, I'd go to uh, a night called Twice As Nice sometimes when I was when 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 Twice As Nice was happening, and at the end of the night they'd always just play like Wookie dubs, and they'd play like the last three or four tunes were all like Wookie dub plates, and that was like the highlight. Like he was great. So w which is which is the Wookie cut for you? It's got to be it scrappy. It's got to be scrappy. It it's got to be scrappy. Really, scrappy was the one. Blew me away. Yeah. Amazing. I was, I was almost going to ask you to. To do the baseline for us, but I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. You just got off the hook there. Cheers. Okay, so yeah, check. Out. <laughs> but yeah, some wookie definitely. <coughs> okay then. So, um, have you got something else you can play us that kind of takes us up to date? Something else you're working on? Something else? Yeah, new? this is um, 
I think I'm going to play this actually. It's um, it's for a project for V2, which is like um, an old Latin like Latin boogaloo um, project, like 60s like Latin jazz, and they put in, they put together a compilation and they asked me to remix um, Fever by La Luna. Interesting. Yeah, it's quite quite interesting. Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that was quite interesting. I thought uh, I'd approach it in a kind of different way because I think with a project like that, often, more often than not, people just kind of do updated versions, like they'll put like extra drums on it, make it maybe kind of a synth line. But um, I wanted to kind of re really deconstruct it and just take the vocals and do something put it in a completely different mm -hmm. like arena with that track. So artistically do you think kind of irreverence is an important thing of important part of what you do? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is just basically have fun with it. Just have um the best results are when you're really having fun with the track. Like when you're slaving over something and and you're not having fun with it, I think it's like that's when it gets a bit dry. But if you're and that sometimes uh, but sometimes the t decisions you make also with the remixes you you take as well can al can sometimes backfire if you're not really into the track then i don't think it's always advisable to remix it i think if you're having fun with it and you you know you're really into it i think yeah. that the best results come from that so definitely you would kind of you have a sort of follow your feet type yeah. attitude to remixes then yeah yeah definitely um and fo yeah follow your follow your head kind of just and follow your feet yeah just and your elbows. And your elbows. <laughs> what about and your knees? Your waist <laughs> and your knees. <laughs> and you've got something else you're going to play us now as well, haven't you? Yeah. This is um, is this guy uh, from the UK, from Sheffield, called Toddler. He's making um, Dancehall. Um, and this is Count and Sindon remix called Inner the Dancehall. <laughs> Thank you. Little dance or flex. Yeah, that's sounding pretty heavy. Thanks. I like the slowing down bit. In slowing the down bit. Yeah. It's the new speeding up, it slowing is. down. It's definitely, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's going to be doing it soon. Slowing down. We'll Forget gradually one thirty, and it will end up at like 5 mm -hmm. BPM. And it th but then that will really fit people, you know, that kind of like mm, underwater yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of dancing thing that you see people doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Underwater yeah, that's I wasn't gonna say it, but you What's said that? it for me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, we, we've got to talk about your. We've got to talk about your DJing style. You're a CD only DJ, right? Uh, yeah, I'm CDJs at the minute. I'm thinking about Serato, mm -hmm. using Serato as CDs. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of resisted Ableton. At the moment, I know um, Switch started on Ableton, but now he's CDJs, and Hervé and Trevor Lovies are Ableton users, mm -hmm. which I think is is good. Um, I think you can get good results off every format you use. Vinyl is still good. Serato is good. I think I've seen people like use CDJs incredibly, like very very versatile on CDJs. It's basically knowing your knowing your tool. Mm -hmm. So who's brilliant on CDJs? Uh, Errol Alcan is amazing on CDJs. He's got like his loop points and the way he's just like playing with the pitch and like using the wide wide pitch. So it's basically like can the the feature on the CDJ on the Mark Threes is basically you can go down to like really like zero BPM all the way up to like two hundred or three hundred or something. And he's really create. He's just really creative mm -hmm. with just loop points and. So, so what do you think about that kind of um, vinyl is best sort of school of thought? Um, I'd say it's something, I think vinyl is still really valid and I think, and also people that DJ on vinyl uh, uh, and if they're really tired, that's awesome as well. I don't think necessarily it's, computers are the way forward. It's, it's how you use them. I think you can have a computer and DJ off Ableton, but if you're just really just mixing, like as I would be doing on a CDJ, there's no, there's no advantage to doing it. But if you're using it really creatively, and bringing something new, I think is is good. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, obviously, there's the kind of um, the easiness of carrying it. Are there any other reasons why you why you use CDs and not vinyl? Because um, a lot of the tracks I get given are like CDs. A lot of uh, ma uh, promo companies are mailing out CDs n instead of vinyl now. A lot of the tracks I make, I can just burn quickly on CD, and it's just the ease of of having your laptop wherever you go and just doing something on the plane, <laughs> burning it onto a CD, like ready for the club the same evening. I like the way that you um, sort of spread everything out. You've got your own little messy table on the side of the decks. I'm really, really messy. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> I should uh, I should be more organised. Well, I mean, it's you know, it's everyone's style. I mean, some people probably you know have everything. I like feeling at home when yeah. I go and, and DJ. I like just basically making a mess. You know, <laughs> taking my shoes off, having a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> they should uh, maybe you could put that on your rider. I need a sofa. Yeah. I need a little comfy pillow. Exactly. And uh, whatever else. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. great. I think um, it's the way forward. Okay, then we're, we're kind of like moving towards the end. Um, start thinking about any questions you want to ask Skin Skindon. <laughs> Skindon. That's my new name. Yeah. <laughs> Skindon. Start thinking about any questions you want to ask him, and remember to use the mic. Otherwise, the other people who are going to be watching this afterwards won't have the benefit of your brilliant questions. Um, but before we do that, I guess we should just talk very briefly about your label as well that you run with Switch. Yeah, uh, the label I run with Switch is called Counterfeit. We started um, last year. Um, we got off to a very slow start. We had like one release in like one year. Um, that's yeah, that's relaxed. Yeah, it's very relaxed. And then we signed a group called Radio Clip. They're um, one guy from Sweden, one guy from France, and we've done two EPs from them. Uh, one which is out now in the shops, and uh, two uh, one Count of Monte Cristo. Um, EP and one that we did together. So, and that's basically kind of something that we started. Um, we started off actually as a kind of bootleg label, like we're doing like our sort of mashups and stuff. But then we wanted to. Um, we didn't think that was maybe the the best way to do it, and we wanted to basically prom like promote new music and whatever style that would be, just a kind of platform for our productions. So, have you got something you can play us? I've got counterfeit. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've got. Um, this is this is the new uh, track, Radio Clip, uh, Divine Goza, which is actually um, a beat for Bonde Bonze de Role for their album, and this is like um, this is a remix by a kid called Bradinsky from Paris. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, so one final question for me before we kind of open it out to everybody else. Um, you've mentioned a few different people that you've liked along the years. Um, if you could get one person to make a tune in your style for you, I don't know, Aphex Twin or Bomb Squad or I don't know, Wookie, <sighs> who, who would you get to try and make a Sinton style track? Oh, difficult, <laughs> very tough. Mm. It would definitely have to be someone not from dance music background. Tough, very tough. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to pass. I don't want to pass on the question either. Hmm. Well maybe you can marinate on that one. Yeah, I'll marinate on that. So who's got a uh, who's got the mic? Who's got a question? That was a bit. Who's got the poison? Who's got the remedy? Wasn't it? <laughs> um, I'm heading towards the cheesy rap. You don't want to hear. Got a career it. in hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> so not. <laughs> okay. So, any questions? Is there a microphone? Okay. Um, I'm just wondering if you um, have like if you listen to much sort of speed garage and what kind of influences if you've got in from that or artists that you kind of listen to in that kind of genre. Um, yeah, uh, again, I'm I'm kind of I don't know who to who to say really. I think it's more more sound than kind of I'm trying to pinpoint like certain artists. Um, I've just gone blank. Um, Actually, um, you should check out, um, if you're into like speed garage, you should check out um, the whole kind of baseline house stuff going on back home. It's like, um, it's very big in like the north, north of England. And that's like the new, sp I guess the new speed garage or like speed garage is a kind of for this year. And it's very sort of baseline led mm. house. But the the baseline house, house thing is quite intriguing because I've been trying to find an inn, you know, like to find what I like in it personally mm. and I haven't actually I haven't found my in yet you should yeah there's a few people um check out uh, uh Dexplicit's doing some good stuff you 
know of, but um, T2, who's got a big tune called Heartbroken, and um, DJ Q is a good person to check out as well. T2 Heartbroken, that's yeah, that's like a one for me. massive record. Um, okay. DJ Q as well, he's got uh, he's a one extra DJ. Um, but the f yeah, the tracks are few and far between. They're not always the production values for me aren't always there. Uh, I think it's still growing, mm -hmm. but. Um, there's some interesting stuff there. There's some good stuff there, yeah. Check out that niche 4-4 four four stuff. Ah, what's the show on Rinse? Okay. Wednesday afternoon for some for some baseline house on the internet, Rinse FM. Cool. Good. We'll be checking it out. Cosman, you've got a question, haven't you? Yeah, I was um, I was wondering what do you call your music actually? Because I know you were on the. Um, Cover of Mix Mag, I think. Uh, like D a couple of DJ. Oh, oh, oh DJ, there. yeah. Oh um, yeah, I've I heard a good one. I've I heard Wasteline House <laughs> the other it's day. Than waste Man House, isn't it? Waste, <laughs> yeah. Don't want to be associated with Waste Waste Man, but um, uh, yeah. I mean, people have tried to categorise it as like Fidget House was the first one, and that was I think a deliberate move by Jesse Rose to kind of um, to start a kind of media attention. Um, and then I've heard Crunk House. Um, I've heard like all kinds of different things. We don't really call it anything. Um, house, I suppose, it's kind of used to be a bit of a dirty word. Um, but uh, I don't think it really has a, has a sound, uh, a name. Okay, any other questions? Who else? Okay. Well, should we have you've got one more thing you can play us? Oh, we've got a question. Oh, just curious to know what um, were some of the indie rock bands that you've been working with or or would like to work with? Indie rappers. Indie rock bands. Indie hip hop artists. In indie rock. Indie rock. Mm. Indie rock bands. Okay. Is that better? Who <laughs> would I like? Who <laughs> I'd like to work with? Yeah, like well, you were saying that you wanted to do more stuff with. Yeah, bands. yeah, I, I want to definitely. But is um, there any specific? that you're into right now? I heard a good band recently that um, Errol put me onto, which um, I don't think they have a deal yet, but uh, they're called Late at the Pier. Do you know, have you heard of them? <laughs> they're, they're really good, Late at the Pier. That's like my, fa I suppose that the favorite, my favorite stuff I've heard recently. But um, keeping up with bands is, is like, it's another thing to like listen to. It's like, I really should do more research with bands. I need to, it's hard enough keeping up with dancehall, hip hop, blah blah blah, whatever. Yes, it's a twenty-four hour job. Yeah. Okay. Then, well, I guess we should start wrapping up. Um, have you got something to play us out with before we uh, say farewell? Yeah. <laughs> DJ, DJ Reckless. Reckless. DJ Reckless on Rinse cool. FM on the internet. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna play a remix for Band actually, since we were talking about bands. Um, they're a band from Liverpool called To My Boy. Uh, it's coming out through Excel. <laughs> thank you. So really, all there is to do now is to say thank you very much to Sindon. Thanks for having me. Thank you.